Hello, welcome to my workbench. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate the throttle endpoints for a Phoenix Light 50 from Castle Creations. In fact, this is the procedure I use whenever I need to recalibrate the endpoints on any of my ESCs from Castle. So this procedure will work for the Talon 90, which I know has got everybody twisted up out there on the net. There's been several videos on this topic, and I've decided to make my own to show you what I do because I think it's going to be more informative, simple, and take all the witchcraft out of the process. So without further ado, let's get started. I just completed my 450L Dominator from uh, a line, and I have the uh, Phoenix Light 50 because it's a very light uh, <laughs> speed controller. It's very small. I'll zoom in here, and you can see um, it's pretty tight in the 450L, so I couldn't go with the normal speed controller. And I have it all wired up, and I have a battery in there. Back here, I'm using the AR7200BX, and this is where some of the trickiness comes in because there is some... Um, I don't want to say weirdness, but there is definitely some uh, things to know about the AR7200 with regard to getting the castle into program mode. Down below here you see I have a Lifey pack. It's a 6.6 .6 volt uh, pack, and that pretty much is okay. I know that servos tend to like 6 volts, but I've been doing this now and uh, for, uh, for definitely a few months on my other models and I have not had any problem. The one thing that you are going to need is basically this extension line here. Um, to do the calibration procedure involves pulling the red wire out of the universal connector, the JR connector, so that there isn't any voltage feedback going on from the BEC of the Phoenix uh, together with the voltage output of the AR7200BX. So that is extremely important to remember. I made up this little wiring harness so that I didn't have to constantly take the red wire out of my throttle lead that's coming out of the castle. I didn't want to keep bending that plastic connector to pull that wire out. So I made up this little um, little pigtail here. It's basically a, an extension and then I pulled the wire out and taped it back. I have it appropriately labeled as well. Um, I hope you can see that but uh, I'm a little bit of a neat freak maniac. So, without further ado, let's get started. In order to program the castle, uh, the endpoints, and calibrate them to your radio, the, the castle has to be put into a calibration mode. And this mode uh, becomes um, uh, obvious when, uh, by looking at the little LED uh, that's on a lot of these castles. On the, on the Talon 90, it's on the side. That's the ESC that I have experience with. And on the Phoenix, it's just buried into one of these boards over here. Um, so you want to make sure that you can visibly see that LED during this process. The other thing to realize is that the AR7200 uh, is included with a manual, as, as, as expected, along with an addendum. And in the addendum, it goes over the, the, the concept of what I'm about to demonstrate, which basically says that the AR7200 will never output a high uh, pulse upon initialization. So in other words, on the throttle lead, it will not put out uh, anything on the positive side of that throttle channel, and it will drive the throttle channel to 0%, and this is done for safety reasons. The problem is the castle creation ESCs require this high pulse in order to put into uh, calibration mode. So there's, that's the reason that we are going to power up the AR7200 first using our external power pack here and let it complete its initialization and then we'll go through the steps to basically initialize or get the castle ESC into its calibration mode. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So here you can see I have my DX9 and I love this radio. Um, I'm going to power it up and it's already been previously bound to the 7200BS. And yes, she's warning that I need to be in hold mode. That's just a standard safety thing that I do. Um, so now it's currently in hold mode. And you see I have it labeled as 450 Dominator. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Um, I'm going to take it out of hold mode, okay? And if we take a look at the menu, we're going to look at our servo setup. 
And as you can see in the travel rates, uh, very clearly, I have throttle set to 100 and 100. And this is important to get the AR7200 to properly initialize. And this is, a, I think, a common mistake, or at least a mistake that I was making. I just could not get the ESC to go into to its calibration mode. And I'll explain a little bit later why. So you want to make sure that your throttle is at 100 and 100. You also want to make sure that your throttle curve is going to be linear. And here you can see that I'm in normal mode, I'm out of hold mode, and it is indeed linear. And that's going to be important for calibration. So once you have this all set up, you can stay in this menu. You come over here to your 7200 BX, and then you uh, pull out the throttle uh, connector, which is going to your ESC. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug in this little harness here with the battery. Now the battery is going to be used to power the 7200 BX, and I have it on this little on-off switch, which I really think is very convenient. Very, very convenient. Okay, so we're going to plug that into one of the auxiliary channels here. So let me pull out the little, I use the rubber stopper, and now I'm going to plug in the uh, connector into the one of the auxiliary channels. It really doesn't matter, you can even use the bind channel. Um, what's important is that the red wire is in the middle and the black or brown wire is on the bottom. And it's keyed, so it's hard to screw up, but you definitely want to just make sure that your polarity is correct. No need to blow anything up. And what that's going to do is it's going to use the power lead, which is on the center pin, along with the ground lead, which is on the bottom pin, and power this entire bus. That's what you're looking to do. The signal wire is the orange wire, for those who aren't aware, and that's where the signal comes from, from your transmitter to the receiver that's built in here, that's going to talk to all the various items on this little backplane. So now that's plugged in. The second thing we want to do is we want to prepare this lead over here. So very simply, uh, as I indicated before, I have this little harness right here that I made. And uh, I'm going to hook this up now to the ESC lead coming out of here. Now keep in mind there is no power here. And, um, you know, nothing's going to be powered up. I'm going to have to put the camera down. I'll be right back. I need two hands to plug this guy in. And as you can see, the red wire is pulled out, the orange wire is on the top, and I'm going to plug that into the throttle channel of the AR7200. Remember, the battery is not hooked up to the ESC. There is no power that's going to be delivered out of the ESC to the AR7200. Okay, that, that red lead is out, and the battery is disconnected from the uh, Phoenix, from the Castle Creations ESC. So uh, now... Uh, with this guy all uh, turned on, and uh, it really doesn't matter on these radios where you are. I'll leave it on the on the menu here. Um, also, please, for safety, please remove the blades. Um, I know it sounds pretty cheesy to think about, but, you know, don't need any accidents because as you calibrate, um, depending on the calibration step that you're in, uh, this guy could spool up. And on the bigger birds, uh, I've been whacked when these things have just swung around at idle and uh, it hurts. So no, no accidents, please. Safety first. So with the radio powered up and our, uh, our endpoints for throttle set to 100 and 100, okay, and I'm out of throttle hole just for this calibration step, which means I've got a linear, a linear throttle curve, we're going to go ahead and power up the AR7200BX. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to hit our little power switch here. So I'm going to hit the power switch, and the AR7200 is going to do its initialization. And it doesn't matter, high stick, low stick, just keep everything normal, your low stick on the throttle. And there you go. You see that the AR7200 has gone through its, its calibration and has driven that throttle point to zero and went through all the things it needs to go through to initialize. So it's online. Now that the 7200BX is now properly uh, started and uh, gone through its configuration, if you remember, our throttle endpoints were set to 100 and 100. Now, before you plug in the ESC, you want to go into servo setup, and you want to set up your throttle endpoints to be 30 and 30. Now, what pe some people think is, well, how is this going to work if you put the throttle, I've heard people say this, if you put the throttle stick high, well, that's sending out the high pulse. Forget about the travel rate. That, that's what the ESC is looking at. It's looking at the high pulse, 
not the value of the travel rate. It, that, right? I mean, think about it. So now, in the travel adjust, we have our endpoints set to 30 and 30 on the throttle channel. And to get the ESC into its program mode, we're going to put the stick at high. Because the ESC wants to see a high pulse. Not the travel. Don't worry about the number. The travel adjust is just the value. But the pulse that's carrying that value, in my opinion, without really knowing the logic, I'm guessing here, but it's the pulse that it's looking for. So you set this guy to high, okay? It's out of throttle hold, by the way, so we're in a normal uh, mode, which is going to give us a linear throttle curve, and that's very important. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the ESC. So let me see if I can do that. Uh, I'm going to have to put the camera down just one second. So now I plugged in the ESC, and you can see it blinking. And the red light is indicating that it's in calibration mode. With the high stick set, Okay, I would leave and do the, I would leave this stick here, okay, and I would basically go ahead and calibrate the high side first. And this will prevent um, the ESC from spooling up. Um, so I would start with the high stick, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dialing up the travel adjust on the high side. So here I go, dialing it up, okay, the number right now I'll narrate. But as you can see, the light is blinking in the foreground, uh, actually in the background, and I'm going to get it way up there. Usually I go five clicks at a time. So I'm at 85. And now I'm at 90. And it just blinked. Right? And we just go two. That's the high side. And you see a slow blink with the chime. And I'm at 92 on the throttle. See, it's telling us that the high side is done. So now we move this to the low stick position, and you see it's a fast blink. The blinky light's a little different, and the same game applies. We're going to start adjusting up our throttle adjust here, the, the travel on the throttle. Not the throttle adjust, the travel rate on the throttle. Watch the light. 85. See, now it blinked, right? So now I'm at 90, and I press the button to lock it in. And you see that the light on this particular ESC went to solid yellow. And that just means that the data log is full, but that's it. That's the calibration right there. And it's basically armed and ready to go. If I, ba if I start it here, you can see that it starts to go. One thing to keep in mind is that after the low point and high point is set, you should really go ahead and rebind the AR7200 to your transmitter. And that will ensure the failsafe for uh, the radio to know where the low point is. So that's always a good idea to do, and I'll, I'll do that after, now that I'm done calibrating. To finish up, uh, remember to pull apart the harness that you made and plug in the ESC directly to the throttle channel and uh, remove the, the battery connector, this little harness guy here, little battery and harness, back up to the receiver. So that's important to do. Also, keep in mind, uh, unplug the ESC first when you're when you're when you're done. Uh, do not unplug the radio, okay? Power, or else it's you know that's not a good idea. So safety first, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that this process works for you. It's very very simple once you get your head around it, and uh, hopefully that takes the witchcraft out of this process. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, comment on it below. Thumbs up also helps as well. Enjoy!